Hello, everyone, and good afternoon. My name is Daniel Brantz Ferreira. I'm CEO of the Brazilian Center for Mediation, Arbitration, CBMA. Boa tarde a todos os brasileiros que estão aqui assistindo. Eu sou Daniel Brantz Ferreira, é, diretor executivo do CBMA. E, e hoje é uma honra a gente ter aqui o, o Terence Liu, que é árbitro na China, é um dos representantes aqui da, da, da Gangzhou é, Arbitration Commission, que é um dos principais centros, inclusive, é, é, chineses, é, and also é, Elisaveta Gromova, which is a, a, a two who is a, a specialist in digital technologies and uh, director for international cooperation of the South Euro State University in Chelyabinsk, Russia. Então, é, sejam todos bem-vindos. Muito boa tarde. Thanks everyone for joining us. Good afternoon. And and this this event today is to to promote the cooperation between the BRICS countries, to promote arbitration in the BRICS countries, and mainly here in China and Brazil. Uh, just so, uh, as everyone uh, knows, uh, Brazil and China, they have a huge cooperation, uh, commercial cooperation. It's our first partner, you know, let's just say it. You know, so, you know, the, the commercial balance between Brazil and China is absolutely huge. So, uh, conflicts uh, may appear during these these relations you know and and the the first thing uh, terence i don't know uh, of course you might know that but brazil uh, sells to china is soy the brazilian soy is the first product like in third is 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 our meat the brazilian meat so it's it's a really huge market for us and of course you guys all, all sells like tubes and everything in, in technology for us and so it's a it's a really uh you know uh, uh good partnership and our president was currently there like a month ago just establishing more partnerships with china mm -hmm. with the chinese so we, we're really growing and this partnership shows that 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 we can even grow more especially in the conflict solutions area so uh, i need to thank shen Ximin, your president the president mm -hmm. of the gangzu arbitration commission you for for your first contact you are the one who contacted us and made everything possible so thanks a lot and on behalf of our president too gustavo schmidt he was thrilled and all the the brazilian arbitration community here especially in rio de janeiro mm -hmm. we were thrilled to establish this cooperation this fruitful cooperation with you guys and just just so everyone knows the cooperation uh, will we, we exchange mainly knowledge will promote arbitration in both countries and not just the countries in the BRICS countries just so we have Elisaveta Gromova here she's Russian so we're doing the we have we have the BRI here right uh, BRICS the B BRC uh, <laughs> here together in this webinar so uh, and and that's the the, the goal of the cooperation we'll, we'll share like our arbitrators panels uh, we'll share our hearing rooms will share uh, know-how, uh, technology, and that that's the, the main deal of this cooperation because ADR and arbitration is, is you know should be spread all around the world, and the, the good practice should be spread all around the world, and, and that's what we're doing here today. So thanks, Terence, once again. And now we will hear some some words of Shen Ximin, the president of the Gangzhou Arbitration Commission who honored us with this cooperation, this agreement. Rafael, por favor. Fortalite主席,您好,我们非常的开心又能够在线上再次的相见。李约的仲裁州将要开幕了,在这里我请代表广州仲裁委表示热烈的祝贺,我们也非常的期待Fortalite主席在方便的时候早日日能够来到广州
Uh, it actually means a lot for us to become like the first arbitration commission uh, in China to work with CBM. It means like significant importance to us because as then you, you said that uh, BRICS, so together we have today, we have Brazil, we have Russia, we have, chi uh, we have China together. So it means a lot. I mean, in terms of arbitration, uh, as uh, when it comes to international arbitration, I think it's, it's getting more important and important because due to like uh, this jurisdiction uh, problem with like uh, traditional lawsuits, I think international arbitration as an RD, ADR, it, it poses a great opportunity for all the consumers or even all the contractors or even people who do like corporate commercial, especially when it comes to international, a uh, very good alternative and possibly the best solution as well. Okay, so today I'm going to share like a short presentation about about uh, our Guangzhou Arbitration Commission and also a little bit like to know about how is the environment of having of doing the international arbitration in in China. So I'm going to share my screen today. Now. Sorry, there's some technical problem. I have to, I have to share the screen. It's the fourth icon. Apresentar. Yes. Um, yeah, because I'm using like the, the Apple, so I have to, you know, try to relax. Take your time. Yeah. No okay. Um. Sorry, guys. I think I have to re rejoin again because I have to like restart my Go ahead. Go browser. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want Do you want to send the PPT so we can share it from here? Yeah, yeah, be great. Okay, I can try to share it from here. I think you've seen yeah, it. It's easier, right? Um, yeah. I have a new one. Maybe I should. Okay. I should, I should... WhatsApp me, please. Yeah, definitely. I will do that. So I can share and just say pass next mm -hmm. slide. That's yes, easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no worries. So how is the revision to the arbitration law in China currently? You know, I read a lot about it. You know, they're inserting some technology parts on it, right? Yes, it is. Actually, we're actually adopting a lot of like AI into like the, in terms of arbitrations. And I mean, like over, over the past few years, right? Actually, we have like an increasing number of international arbitrations. So right now in our commission, we do have arbitrator for more than 80 countries around the world. So we're trying to get more like small, try to establish ourselves as a more international arbitration because um, as you can see, right, uh, nowadays, especially in Guangzhou, Guangzhou used to be like the oldest port in, in China. We are the first city to open our borders to, to, to the world. So basically it's like we have a lot of like expat or even like foreign companies like doing, uh, have their headquarters now in, in Guangzhou itself. So uh, Guangzhou itself is like, it's kind of like strategic strategic city because it's located just like like one hour an hour and a half to Hong Kong and to Macau as well. So you can see we call ourselves like the Great Bay Area. So we have the main cities like Guangzhou, which is known which as known as Canton. Canton, we have Canton, we have Shenzhen, and we do have like Hong Kong and Macau as well. So it's very well strategic. Uh, I mean, locations. So uh, in terms of that, so a lot of like international companies that tend to like set up their companies or even their factories in, in the areas. So arbitration becomes more important, important because uh, we, we can do, we can choose our, it's easier for the, I mean, for companies to to mitigate or, or mediate the, the dispute or even try to resolve the dispute in, the, in some, uh, instead of like going to like traditional lawsuits. And uh, some of the facts is that actually we do have the, Actually, in, in Guangzhou itself, like a funny fact, right? So for 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 expat, I think we have the most of Korean. Yeah, we have the most Korean in the whole China because there are, there's a lot of factories. Even Samsung is over there as well. Yeah, so it's pretty inter interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Had, I had some troubles, you know, to to contact people from China before. You know, the uh, you know my perception from Brazil was that it was really clo a close a close closed community. Let's just put it in that way mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. it's not uh, maybe the language barrier back then i'm not talking maybe. about now but maybe yeah back then you know it was mm -hmm. a it was a problem but now i see mm -hmm. 
fortunately it's open in you know so yes 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 uh so when like we try to speak portuguese as well <laughs> yeah in macau right yeah. In Macau, yeah, there's a lot of people speaking Portuguese. Actually, I I was just back from Lisbon, so I tried to pick up Portuguese as well to talk to you in the maybe in the future. <laughs> it's yeah. not an ling easy language, but it's not as hard oh, as yeah, Mandarin. Definitely, I mean, I mean, Russian is hard as well, right? <laughs> yeah, it's really <laughs> a bit. <laughs> but you know, I was trying to study Chinese, so the language is great. Mm -hmm. But regretfully for me, it wasn't easy. But I wish, uh, you know, I wish to learn it one day, you know, <laughs> because I'm lecturing to... in my university. I'm lecturing for Chinese students. We have many wow. Chinese students. So I and some sometimes uh, we have some barriers in English language. So I was mm -hmm. trying to translate some like com uh, like competition or mm -hmm. something like that, you know, just to make them understand it better. Mm -hmm. So, but so that is why I was trying, you know, to study Chinese. But all I remember is Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those ones, right? <laughs> we, right? You can visit, you can visit us or commission in China, so we can, yeah, we can like communicate a little bit, so we can pick up the language fast. Yeah, yeah. By the way, Daniel, do you receive the the PPT? Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to mm -hmm. share the the PPT here. Let's just. Open it. Just share my screen, it'll be easier. Yep, yeah, definitely. Can you see it? Almost, yep. yes. There we go. Yes, perfect. Just, yeah, you're ready to go. Yep. All right. Um, so my presentation is going to be like the building international consensus and promoting high quality development of the commercial arbitration. So my name is Terence, uh, Terence Liao. So I'm actually the arbitrator of the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission. So, okay, we can, we can go on. Next slide. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the arbitration in China. So actually, the arbitration law of the PRC was uh, promulgated in the 1994. Okay, so Guangzhou Arbitration Commission is one of the first civil and commercial arbitration institution in the seven pilot city after the promulgations of the arbitration law of the PRC and it's only the civil and commercial arbitration institution in Guangzhou. So you can see here, because we have a long history of, um, I mean, our commercial have a long history uh, of doing like civil and commercial arbitration, because actually we are the one of seven, the earliest one of uh, arbitration commission in, in whole China. Uh, among the seven one will be like, the, we do have like Guangzhou, we have Shanghai, we have Beijing, we have Tianjin, uh, uh, Nanjing as well. So among them, uh, we, are, we, are, we are the earliest one, okay? The next slide, please. Yeah. So, I would say like uh, over the years, over the past few years, we can see the high speed development of the arbitration in China. So when you see the data, right, back in 2011, the national case load is less than uh, 100,000 with a total amount in dispute of less than, it's like 113.3 billion. But 10 years later, you can see even during the COVID time, the national case load was more than 415 and the amount in dispute exceeded the straggling amount of 859.3 billion. So if we like try to come in USD for better understanding, it would be like um, $110 in billion, 100 billions. Yes, so back in 2021. So you can see, um, in China, we're trying to even even the court, even like uh, the judicial court, we're trying to like um, give a lot of uh, support and even influence to arbitration commission, because in China we do have a lot a lot of case load, especially during uh you know the pandemic time, a lot of companies, a lot of dispute even for like the internet international corporations between like companies and the bots, so. In, in summary, you can see in 10 years, uh, the national arbitration case suit has quadrupled and the amount in dispute has increased nearly the sevenfold. 
So <clears throat> the number of case and amount in dispute in a year is close to the sum right now, in, especially in 2021, is close to the sum of the 70 years from 1995 to 2011. So about 1% to 5% of the arbitration commission end up in arbitration cases in different industries. So we are trying to promote uh, more and more it's like companies, uh, domestic or international, when they sign the, any corporate uh, commercial agreements, we will try to uh, them to even like try to ask them to include like the arbitration clause in the agreements so their dispute can end up with uh, using the ADR instead of like going to the traditional courts. Next slide, please. So a little bit about our commission. So uh, the GZSC serve parties from over 100 countries and regions. So uh, this is so we have like, so we've been like doing this since um, uh, the establishment of our uh, institutions. So we've been like arbitrated, we've been we doing a lot of arbitrate award. So for, for the past few years, and it's about, uh, it's like, more than 100 countries and you can see our chinese arbitrators originated from more than 100 countries and region so right now we do have arbitrators from about for example like even like uk us and then you as well from brazil which is our first <laughs> or first brazilian <laughs> arbitrator in our commission and we do have like uh, south asia we do have a lot and yeah we try to make our, in, our institution more diversified instead of like just trying only try to concentrate on domestic arbitrator because most of the time when we sign a uh, arbitration uh, we, when we have a, co a commercial agreement with uh, arbitration crowds we try to make both party feels a bit comfortable so having a domestic arbitrator and also like a arbitrator origin from uh from the other parties home country right if we bring a sense that we are trying to make like a more fair or even like more just environment to make it more to more transparent for both parties as well instead of like being one bias to the Chinese arbitrators which will create a lot of like uh, you know like dispute or you want to try to like uh, uncertainties or untrust etc yeah so in <clears throat> like Okay, the number of registered operators as an operation practitioner in Asia White had increased to nearly 100 people, 100,000 people, but it's not more than enough because, as you might know, in China, we do have a population of 1.4 billion. So, uh, the proportion of Chinese enterprise choosing operation to resolve dispute in foreign related transactions have reached more than 95%. So, about 95% of all the, I mean, foreign related transactions, I mean, like commercial agreements, we would choose like arbitration as a, as a dispute resolution instead of going to arbitration clause because you have to save the time for doing of like you know like uh you know like notarized notarization a poster like this kind of thing so idea i mean arbitration will be the best one uh the best uh best best choices all oh, yeah next slide please yeah so when you talk about the extra uh, extra traditional enforcement or arbitrator awards. So uh, please be aware that China is a party to the United Nations Commission on the Recognition and Enforcement of Foreign Arbitration Award of 1958, which we call the AKA, as known as the New York Convention. So domestic arbitrator awards are enforceable in more than 170 countries, member states, or regions. And present, uh, the, our commission awards have been successfully recognized and enforced in regions such as Hong Kong, Macau, Taiwan, as well include countries including like Singapore and US. So talking about uh, my province, which is okay. So when you can see the the rig, the, the the small city, the city in red color, which is I originally from. So uh, Guangdong province, Guangdong province is Guangdong is one of the provinces with the most developed economy in China. And its GDP ranks first in the country for many consecutive years. So Guangdong, so Guangzhou, uh, the city where I'm from, is the capital of of, Guang, of Guangdong. So when we talk about Guangzhou nowadays, it's not about only the Guangdong province itself. It's more like uh, the whole Greater Bay Area. So when you see here, it's like the Greater Bay Area, the GBA is like is the metropolis located in the Guangdong, covering an area of about. 56,000 square kilometers uh, with a population of over 86 million. 
it combines the regional GDP, which is approximately of 1,800 billion in 2022. So Guangzhou is one of the major cities in the GBA. So in Guangzhou Arbitration Commission, as the city's most influences, most influence uh, arbitration commission in the whole province. So what we provide is actually we provide the first class arbitration services. And um, we do have the internet standards for online arbitration. We do have an intelligent online arbitration platform, the three plus N hearing model, and the four sharing initiative, and the nine shell consensus on arbitration corporations, which we have signed with C CBMA. Okay, so we talk about the first cross arbitration service because right now our commission we have the number one case load in China, and the total amount in this field reached nine point one billion, which is a lot. In <laughs> arbitration cases cover various sectors, but mostly we do like corp, uh, corp, uh, commercial. We do a lot of IP as well, construction, etc. So the development of the international cases as well. So uh, in the in the recent year, we do have a lot of cases with uh, foreign parties, for example, like uh, in, in the UK and the US, mainly like Southeast Asia, we do have like uh, the, the foreign parties will be like even like Malaysia, uh, Singapore, Thailand. In Latin America, we do have, we right now we do have a few in Brazil as well. So Brazil, and uh, we do have like in Peru, Colombia, Argentina, Chile, um, uh, Uruguay as well. Yeah. So the Guangzhou uh, Arbitration Commission was included in the Supreme Court One Stop International Commercial Dispute Resolution Mechanism and ranked among the top three international arbitration institute along the Belt and Road regarding its credibility. So we're being, we are highly recognized by the judicial, uh, judicial office in China. So when you talk about international arbitration, so the number of foreign related arbitration cases has also ranked first among the China City Arbitration Institute for two consecutive years. So accounting of nearly one fifth, 20% of the national total, an increase of about 1.5 times in the past few years. So we can see we have involving parties from more than 30 countries and regions in six continents. In 2022, cases from countries along the Belt and Road increased by 112% yearly. The number of foreign arbitrators doubled to more than 200, 201, because you have now we have Daniel and Gustavo, 202. So not a single foreign related cases has been aside or unenforced. So all the, what I want to point out is actually all the foreign related cases we are being enforced, we, we are being enforced in China or abroad. So this is a very key uh, key point that we want to show to you, um, the world, I'm to share to you like uh, during during the arbitration week that we, all the arbitrator awards is can we, we can we, we can enforce and um, the reason why we need to include like we want to cooperate with uh, so many arbitration commission around the world because we do have a lot a lot of international foreign related arbitration cases so um it's very important for us to work with like uh esteem institution for example like cbma to better serve our i mean for for uh, to better to to give award in terms like foreign related arbitration cases and also to be fair and just as well the next slide please so in terms of like worldwide recognition, so the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission has signed the memorandums of understanding with internationally renowned arbitration institutes such as the Silicon Valley uh, Arbitration and Mediation Center and also the Japan Commercial Arbitration Commissions. The American Chamber of Commerce in South China regarded the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission as a long-term partner. So Guangzhou, uh, so Guangzhou Arbitration Commission was also strongly recommended by consulates of various countries in Guangzhou to resolve commercial disputes. So re receiving high price from the Council General of Thailand in Guangzhou, the CG of Panama in Guangzhou, and also the former Minister of Justice of Pakistan. So, <clears throat> so Guangzhou Arbitration uh, Commission issued the first globally recommended standard for the online arbitration which is called the Guangzhou standard, which is the standard uh, actually uh, missed by our commission to promote the standardization of the international online arbitration. So when it comes to the Guangzhou standard has received support and recognition 
for more than 150 domestic arbitration institutions and nearly 50 overseas arbitration institutions covering the countries and regions along the Belt and Road, as well as the European Union and North America. So uh, the Guangzhou standard received a special recognition on the UNICETRO website as well. So we are we are we are, we are keen on on the AI and also technology as well as a arbitration commission. So our commission established the first cross border online commercial dispute resolution platform, the APEC ODR platform for small and medium enterprise in APEC members, economic providing an efficient, user friendly, and cost effective one stop online dispute res resolution service to handle like cross border commercial dispute. As one of the three official APEC partners, the APEC ODR platform achieved the highest caseload among the partners. Uh, so we actually like the official as APEC, APEC as well. So as uh, and a foreign, foreign related case was selected as the one of the three leading arbitration cases by the Ministry of Justice. Currently, the platform had administered administer about 500 cases with a total amount in dispute of more than 5.5 billion. Most cases on the ODR platform are concluded within 32 days, nearly three times faster than traditional arbitration proceedings. So parties from APEC regions, the EU and ASEAN countries have submitted their cases to the APEC ODR platform. So based on the three major legal system, namely the socialist rule of law system with the Chinese characteristic, the mainland China, uh, the common law system, Hong Kong, SAR, and the civil law system, Macau, the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission actually established the three and pre plus N tribunal mode, which effectively aligns with foreign arbitration rules and incorporates other tribunals modes from different jurisdictions. This model increased the traits of many arbitration hearing proceedings and allow the party to choose one of the one the one they are familiar with or more feel com comfort comfortable with. So when it comes to that, you, now we have the we have the socialist rule of law system with Chinese characteristic. We do have common law and civil law. So all the parties actually they can choose uh, which tribunal uh, they they prefer. So we will actually appoint like some. Um, we will recommend the the arbitrator with like uh with the suitable credentials to become the arbitrator in the in the hearing itself. So, the new Taiwan Regional Tribunal would ensures the arbitration as an efficient dispute resolution method for cross strait economy and trade exchange, boasting a hundred and seventy seven percent year on year increase in Taiwan related cases in two thousand twenty two. So uh, when it comes to that, the, our commission also guided the Russian arbitration institution to adopt the China, mainland China tribunal mode for hearing Russian commercial dispute, providing a Chinese arbitration solution for international commercial dispute and resolution. By ensuring the fostering arbitration corporations mechanism on arbitration standards, courtrooms, arbitrators, and service window. Our commission strike to promote the harm, harmonization of the domestic and international commercial arbitration rules and the sharing of arbitration resources. So when we so we're talking about the national consensus. So the con national consensus is about talking about how we can become more globalization, the uh, digitalization, artificial intelligence, and low carbonization are the future trend for the commercial arbitration. The concept for openness, cooperation development and innovation are essentials for the high quality development of the commercial arbitration. By signing the national consensus with the leading institute in the BRICS country and countries along the Belt and Route, uh, the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission is committed to building a high land for the development of the international arbitrations. Exploring uh, the forefront of arbitration. So, um, so the Guangzhou of the Commission also established the world first meta city arbitration court and explored the creation of the world first virtual tribunal room and the arbitration secretary. So the first matter was arbitration case on virtual property dispute was concluded in five days, providing the valuable Guangzhou experience for the proper resolution of the virtual world dispute. So. If you have any question, you feel free to contact us and this was all rest. And thank you for listening. And thank you, Daniel. Thank you.
Terence, thank you, thank you for your enlightening uh, presentation to us. You know, you've, you've talked about key issues here in, in arbitration. For example, mm -hmm. enforceability. Enforceability of the award is one of the main concerns when it comes to international arbitration, and the main obligation of an arbitrator, especially international one, to mm -hmm. render to to hand down an enforceable mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. arbitration award. That that's the main mm -hmm. concern there. And of yes. course, you know, to my delight and to the, the audience delight and to Elisaveta's delight, you talked about technology, you talk about your software, and you talk about the arbitration in the metaverse, all topics mm -hmm. we are we've been researching about AI, of course, you, you talked mm -hmm. about too. And and you know, we, we know the Chinese are really advanced in, in, in that matter. Mm -hmm. For example, at CBMA, we're developing our software right now for arbitration mm -hmm. until uh, the, the start of the pandemic, we were mm -hmm. administering everything in paper, but not because we are, let's just put say, laggards in in in, in technology like like late adopters, but because mm -hmm. the, the, our concern was hacking mainly, you know, the confidentiality yes. and hacking. So that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was the main concern here in Brazil. But now, of course, mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. pandemic, we surrender ourselves to technology, and there's there's no way escaping that. It's the only way to move forward. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks for your incredible presentation, and I'm Definitely. sure you're going to have you more and more in our BRICS events because we do a lot. Yeah. It. We're yeah. partners, of course, with the BRICS Law Journal, too, Elisaveta, mm -hmm. from our friends. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are really into the BRICS development, and thanks mm -hmm. for for joining us and for the your, the your amazing arbitration commission that we're gladly starting this cooperation. Elisaveta, please, if you have uh, any questions, the floor is yours. Well, of course, <laughs> it is impossible not to ask questions after such a brilliant uh, presentation. Dear Terence, thank you so much thank you. for thank this. You. It, it was really great. And I was, you know, I was all ears. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I was both impressed uh, with the, the how you in China are developing the arbitration. It is really significant. But of course, I am more about technology i'm a technology digital technologies fan i do research in the sphere of technologies mm -hmm. and uh, you know while i'm researching i'm impressed how china is developing the technologies and china now among the leaders china actually in my opinion is the leader among this and it is really progressive but of course i was impressed with uh, the technologies uh you listed like meta yes and online a dispute resolution platform mm -hmm. and daniel told us about a software uh they are using at cbma can you tell us about the software you are using if it is not a secret i'm not a spy <laughs> yes. no, 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 no. yeah uh what software do you use to manage disputes uh, actually uh for the software right we use yeah. uh, software developed by ourselves so yeah, so it's uh, developed by our own IT engineers with some engineers outside. So, um, so yeah, yeah, so we're using our own software. We're trying to, pro we're trying to, uh, but in, of course, we, we do concern about the cybersecurity. So we hire a lot of, lot of like, like the high tech expert, including like, you know, advice to give advice on how we're going to uh, create these kind of things. And actually, we do pass the, the security. Um, license in China as well, so, uh, which, is, which, which is called uh, the security network uh, licenses in China. It's, it's quite important because for all the like state-owned company, you have you must own this kind of license because you have to keep all the data, uh, even the cloud. We have our independent server as well to, to keep everything sec secure. Yeah, so this is what we do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, <laughs> well, I will try not to ask all questions that they have. <laughs> I will leave it, I hope, for the for our next meeting. But it is a bit, it is a bit, uh, just in, in comparative terms, just Terence knows, uh, we did a, at CBB, we did a huge discovery process just to see what, what was the best way to go with the forward with our software, which mm -hmm. it's not being applied yet, it's in the final uh, version, you know, we're going to test now and then apply mm -hmm. it. But we got some software already ready in the market and we adapted it to our reality, to arbitration proceeding, because mm -hmm. it, it sounded easier to us to get something uh, 
without bugs and it's not in a beta version or anything that we're not developing, then actually getting starting a new one, a new product. So that that's how we did it here. There's not a right mm -hmm. answer to this question, but that's how we chose to do it. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I, I do agree with that. Yeah, but actually using like the software, actually I think I mean from the perspective of all the parties, even like the other creators or even the commission itself or even like the uh, the applicant of, of, I mean, of, of, for both parties, right? I mean, the plaintiff and defendant. So, um, so using the software, the party can submit all the dispute through the online platform to file a case. So, for example, right, uh, all they need to do is actually log in to, they, we don't require for them to log in as well. It's just like to key in the, the, I mean, the phone numbers or email, email, right? So they can file a case. So actually, they can check the progress of the case through the online platform and view uh will the electronically develop the case material in real time for example like um uh or the, the all the materials online uh, using the platform itself so actually it greatly reduces the time and economic cost for the parties to resolve this field i would say and um, from this perspective of of, uh, of a commission right so uh we re realize the entire process of online handling uh, using the software right of cases from falling to closing uh it's, it's much more easier because the platform has been in like the document template template uh, for the entire process of the operation procedure and it, which integrates the approval and management process of where processes and it's easily it's i mean it's easy for for the secretary to manage i mean for for the for the for, for the for the clock i mean for the clock to to manage and we can know it's like uh we can set like pendings reminders and deadline warnings for each process of the arbitrations procedure uh which improve of course improving the efficiency efficiency of the arbitration procedure it also regulates the management of the arbitration procedure as well so um when you talk about when we talk about the software right so as a perspective of an arbitrator so what we can do is actually we can check the case material and basic situation of the case in a timely manner through the arbitration platform and we can communicate using the platform as well so we can talk to the club or even can talk to the um, we cannot talk to the to to defend lawyers or even the plaintiff lawyers about to ask them to submit like additional materials or even like evidence these kind of things and we have like um we have we have a uh, like we have the, to ensure that we have the we grab of the information changes of the case in real time to save like communication costs because for example if you use email sometimes uh it may be maybe the email just went end up in your junk email or in my spam mailbox this is something you don't want to see that so using the platform the software itself is uh basically we can solve every problem uh doing, doing that yeah with tech see you here she is here for your question <laughs> for your answer sorry um you know speaking of significant technological development of China, mm -hmm. it is impossible not to discuss artificial intelligence. I know yeah. that <laughs> I know that China implementing uh, artificial intelligence into justice very actively. At yes. least what can we read from it is what can I read from my news Russia that mm -hmm. uh, artificial intelligence is already substituted the judge. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recently discussed with Daniel if it is possible to to use AI and arbitration, or and is it possible to have artificial intelligence as an arbitrator? Okay. Can you please share your thoughts? Definitely, definitely. Okay. So uh, using artificial uh, artificial intelligence AI, right? So um, so as our commission, right, we do believe that the application of AI is a free significance of the de development of the applications and it must be the direction of the future development as well so the in introduction of the ai technology in the field of application can further enhance the i mean rigor of the application case management on the other hand on, on the one hand and on the other hand it's efficient for legal research and document drafting functions and can provide a strong support for the upgraders to make decision uh, so which help to improve the accuracy of the arbitration awards and um, so what I want to say is like uh, uh, for example right during for for our, for our commission right so actually we are already adopting the AI method in in some of the cases for example like um, most of them is actually finance uh, financial dispute for example like even uh, even you have the loan agreement uh, uh, 
uh, uh, basically it's a loan, a loan agreement with, between the bank, a corporate or the bank to uh, individuals, something like that. So we are actually adopting the AI uh, mechanism in most of the cases like that. So let me explain further how we're going to do it. So for example, you if you have uh, a a loan agreement with uh, with the bank, right? Uh, maybe with the online bank, and you sign the loan agreement using uh, with the dispute resolution clauses with the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission. So actually, the case will actually uh, will send to us, and we will do the first analysis using the AI. Okay, but but the arbitrators still have the final thing on that. Okay, so uh, actually, when, when, when as an arbitrator, when we look at the materials or look at the evidence, like uh, all the all the documents that are submitted, right? So we have the grants and all the all the all the all the materials, and if we think that it is necessary for us to to escalate, I mean the the court hearing to a to a tribunal like a, with, a, with a panel of arbitrators, we we are we are we are not without allowed to do that. It's all it's all on discretion, but. Most of them actually we try to rely on the AI because, in terms of like uh, legal research, um, uh, these kind of things, right? Uh, it provides a lot of strong help for the arbitrator as well. So, um, <clears throat> so at present, uh, so Guangzhou, the, the the city itself is actually actively exploring the application of AI in the arbitration procedures. So, um, so as I as I mentioned in the in the presentation, right up to now, so the Guangzhou Arbitration Commission has launched the first metaverse arbitration court, and we actually actively exploring the related technologies and application of AI arbitrators and AI arbitration clerks. So, of course, considering the confidentiality requirements of arbitration and arbitrators' right to Adjudicate the cases, the application of AI technology in arbitration is still, we we'll say it's an auxiliary. It's not, the finest thing is still with the arbitrator, but we try to uh, use the AI for most of, for some of the cases right now. We're, we're still exploring, <laughs> in midst of exploring itself for the AI. Okay, thank you so much. And I know how precious is your time, so I will just okay. ask. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just ask last question. Mm -hmm. um, we arrived sooner, so he could be joining us for more time. <laughs> we, start, we started sooner. That's why you know that was a yes, tricky. Yes. That was a tricky Brazilian. <laughs> so, so your mistake actually is helping us now. <laughs> it yes. was a plan, okay. <laughs> and my question is about uh, technology, the disputes that are related to technologies. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, what do your center usually face with what kind of technological disputes you usually are uh, face? Mm. So when it comes to like I, I mean comes to like technology dispute, right? Actually, we have to involve like IP, the the, the main core with intellectual property. So at present, right? Uh, so let me let me explain further in our commission. So in our commission, actually, we do have like the we have the main main building. For, for most of the commercial cases. And we do have a specialized IP court for all the technology dispute. It's, we, only, uh, we, only, we, we only arbitrate like uh, in any kind of cases with related, related to technology dispute. So at present, the most common IP dispute in China, uh, I mean, you know, commercial as well, can be divided into uh, categories. Okay, first of all, it will be like the, of course, uh, of course uh, IP infringement dispute. And also the IP contract dispute. Okay, since the acceptance of the cases of uh, by by our commission is restricted by the arbitration clauses, so most of the cases currently handled are still limited to arbitration. I mean, intellectual property con contract dispute, because when it comes to like uh, IP infringement dispute, right, it has to be uh, adjudicated in the court itself. So we do we do not have to, like the jurisdiction to 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 say whether you are. This uh, whether you're trying to infringe, whether you infringe or not, this kind of thing. So, right now we are being restricted only to like the the in IP contract dispute. So the IP uh, cases right handled by the Guangzhou Application Commission has basically covered all the class of action in IP contract dispute. So among which is the prominent are uh, the software, the computer software, the de development contracts. Uh, this is the most common. Okay, uh, franchise contract. Tech transfer contract and etc. 
Okay, so in general, because the arbitration cases are accepted on the premises that all the party reach an arbitration agreement, so compared with uh, the infringement dispute, which need to be negotiated by to reach an arbitration agreement after the fact, the probability of intru introducing the related dispute into arbitration is much higher if a con contract containing an arbitration clause, uh, clause is drafted in at once. So this should be more common in, in, in the world as well. So, so, uh, so for example, like <clears throat> because actually when it comes to IP, when when it comes to tech dispute, right? Normally, what we do is like we we will if like the the matter handle is too complicated, we will try to bring in some expert from as well from the tech sector as well because um, we are we are the expert in law. Uh, we're not expert in of the of the of the tech things, but when it comes to especially the, the recent case actually I handled, which is quite interesting, is about biotechnology, which is high, which I have no idea what it is. So we have to bring in. So I have to actually in, in the end, right? So I have to excuse myself to bring uh, an arbitrator, uh, arbitrator, which is lawyer, and also uh, a biotech PhD holder. <laughs> so. When it comes to technology, it can be so, so, so complex. So it's like, it's totally different when it comes to commercial clauses, uh, commercial dispute, my, my text, because it's so, um, uh, these kind of things, we have to be more I mean, careful as well. Yeah. Thank you so much. You know, we need to meet more <laughs> to have the opportunity now to discuss everything. Thank you so much. It was Thank brilliant. <laughs> Elisaveta, what, what Terence just said now, it's interesting because, for example, uh, I, I face disputes here where arbitrators, they know so much about the, the topic in dispute, like the matter of the dispute, the substance of the dispute, but they don't know so much about arbitration, you know, the procedure, procedure in C, uh, per se. For, for example, they, they have questions about the duty to disclose they don't they, you know they don't navigate too well in this area which is really specific uh, but you know i think that the ideal formation of a tribunal of an arbitration tribunal of a panel of three arbitrators mm -hmm. should be like one specialist one president that knows a lot about the proceeding and maybe another hybrid figure who knows a bit about the topic and a lot a bit more about the of course it's 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 up to the parties to appoint the arbitrator so we have no control over that but that that would be the the the, the, the ideal composition of a, a, an arbitral tribunal but you're completely right we face disputes that sometimes mm -hmm. we don't know it's too specific yes. and and you can even ask an expert if you're an arbitrator before the uh, right after the formation of the tribunal to to ask the experts what can I actually decide in this dispute? Well, mm -hmm. you know, just, just so we can see what you can decide that could be enforceable afterwards. Otherwise, you don't mm -hmm. even know what to look for as an arbitrator. So those are interesting questions that we face. Thanks, Terence, for being here and we should Thank exchange you more information. You so and and that's, that's our cooperation be fruitful and you have your, you you, your center, Gangshu Commission, you have mm -hmm. Rio de Janeiro doors open here also mm -hmm. Celabesk in Russia right now at South Florida mm -hmm. State University with Elisaveta. Mm -hmm. So course. please feel free and thanks for joining us at Rio de Janeiro Arbitration Week. It was an en you. enlightening okay. lecture from, from your side. Thank you. Thanks yeah. a lot. Thank you for having me, definitely. So I would love to speak more in the future. Oh, you, <laughs> you, you. have you have a standing invitation. Elisaveta is our BRICS director for the <laughs> that was for, a for yeah. academics affairs and so yeah you, you 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 just join us whenever you want and okay just let me know Thanks. definitely you have to Thank come to china as well so of course. <laughs> yeah to understand more about the tech the, the things we're doing now because it's quite interesting yeah yes mm -hmm. thanks elizaveta once again for joining us today too and thanks for everyone who who were watching thanks a lot thank you thank you all right bye. thank you bye 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 Thank you.